Look up here. I'm going to give you some tips on how to get started with this and how to work on it. Jordan, you're going to want to pay attention. Okay? I shouldn't hear any clicking, just watching. All right? So if somebody brought this actual photo to me, like it is in pieces, what do you think I would do with it? What do you think the first thing I would do with it would be? No idea? Yeah, I tape it back together. Okay? Rather than scan it in pieces, I would actually take it and carefully put it back together and then tape it on the back side. Wouldn't tape it on the picture. Tape on a scanner is a nightmare. It causes glare, all kinds of issues. So I would actually piece it together, probably put tape on the side, flip it over, tape it all, then take the tape off the side. And I would actually put it in a scanner and then I'd put a book on top of the scanner. Because that's going to press it and it's going to re release as many cracks as humanly possible. All right? We don't have that. I wanted to leave a little bit of a challenge for you. So. The first step in this is to put the puzzle together, okay? And so, the way to start this project is really kind of simple. You're going to go to Select All, and you're going to go to Edit, and you're going to Copy, okay? And you're going to get rid of this. And I'm going to make a new document. When I hit Edit, Copy, Photoshop saves the size of that particular thing that I copied. So I hit Select All, so it would copy the whole thing, all right? So all I'm going to do is hit Create New, okay? And then I'm going to paste it. Okay? So I now have my main layer with all the images on it. Okay? So what I'm then going to do is very simply is I'm going to grab each piece of this. All right? You could use a mask, delicately select it, all that, but you don't really need to do that. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the magnetic lasso. I just find it to be the easiest thing to use here. All right? And I'm going to go around and I'm going to grab the first piece. All right? and with the magnetic lasso, I'm going to click every so often. I like to click every so often just to kind of apply where it is because it does jump a little bit. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to grab all of this piece, as much of it as I can. Now, when that's selected, I'm going to hit a quick shortcut, which is Command-J. When I hit Command-J, it automatically makes a new layer. Okay? I am going to double-click on that layer, and I'm going to call it upper, oops, not right, upper left. So that's here. Okay? I'm going to hide it for now. If you want to hide it, hide it. If you don't, don't. I'm going to go over to the next one. All right, I'm going to hide my layers panel here real quick. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. More is better because you can always remove it later. The nice part is you're going to keep the original. So in case you need to go back and grab a piece of it, you can. Over here, there's not a whole lot of detail, so I can pretty much grab this whole piece here. Okay, Command-J. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be on this layer. Command-J, and this is upper right. Okay? So I got to go around, go back on my main layer again, go here. Whoops. Not good. You shouldn't hear any clicking. Just watching. Be plenty of time to click later. Right, and I'm going to grab some of this, and it's okay that there's a little bit of white there. Again, the more is better. You can always go back and fix it, okay? There's a couple ways to fix it now that you know. You can go to mass mode, quick mass mode here, all right? And I can grab my brush, and I can add to this. And what that's going to do is that's basically going to add to my selection. I can also, with any selection tool selected, I can hold down the shift key and it turns it into the plus, which also switches this to this mode up here. Okay? And this allows me to add to my selection. Okay? Or if I hold down the option key, subtract from my selection. All right? Right now I'm okay with this. All right? I'm gonna hit Command J, lower left, go back to my main layer, hide this for now. And one last piece. Hide my layers for a second so I can actually see this. Kind of chunky over here. Around the corner. Oops, here we go. 
Command-J. So now I have my four pieces. This is lower right. All right, I'm going to hide my main layer, and I'm going to bring back my four pieces. All right, so I'm going to start with the left side, and I'm going to grab my Move tool, and I'm going to move this down. Okay, now I want to want this layer behind this layer. You see why? I got that carve out there. So I'm going to take the lower left, all right, and I'm going to bring it above the upper left. See that? Okay. So it looks like they're roughly on the same angle, but I'm probably going to have to turn this a little bit. The first thing you want to do is do it like a puzzle. So I'm going to hit Command T, which is also Edit Free Transform, just Command T, which allows you to rotate and scale. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, and I want to just rotate this just a little bit. I'm looking at this line, and I'm also looking at her face. All right, so I'm trying to just line this up where it would be. Now, this is, it's snapping, it's bumping, and you'll feel if you use it. If you find that's happening, if you just go to view and release the snap, you're going to get a little more free movement with it, okay? So I can kind of move this a little easier without it sort of snapping. I'm also looking at how the paper tears, and I'm really looking at her cheek, all right? Because I want her to look like she's actually put together right as well as this shadow. See the shadow here? So I've got to kind of line up both of these things. I'm using my keyboards right now. It's a little bit of a lag. All right, and I'm going to bump this over just a little bit more to there. All right, so now I've got her face pretty lined up and the shadow pretty lined up, all right? So I'm going to click Enter or double click on it, and that applies that particular piece. All right, now I'm going to leave these two here, and I'm going over here to the upper right-hand corner, and I'm going to bring this over. All right, and what I'm going to do now with the lower right-hand corner is I'm going to roughly just put it back together. Take this off here so this piece is just there. All right, and I want to do this rough because I know the left side is put together properly. All right, so... This one looks pretty good. You've got her ear right, and I got the, the sort of bow tie cravat thing there going. And I'm also looking at hair and shadows. And it's you're not going to get it exact. You're going to have to mess around a little bit with it. The signature itself, because it looks like we're almost missing a piece, Right. We're going to get rid of that anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right. And that looks pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Now, the bottom piece is really crooked. All right. What I did is if I click on, this is new in Photoshop. You guys ever had to deal with the aggravation that was Photoshop not allowing you to just select a layer? You actually had to go over here and click on the layer. But with the move tool selected, I can click on a piece, and you'll notice the layers change. It didn't happen before. You go to grab one, and the piece down here moves. You're like, what? what's going on? All right. So now the lower right, I'm going to Command T. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to rotate it. And again, I'm trying to line up the neck, all the pieces. The shadow here is really what I'm looking at now. I can lift this up. This piece could actually be in front of the upper right, but I got this big tear here. Your call. All right, which way you'd want to go with that one. I'm probably going to leave it like this because I like the fact that I can work on the skin of the neck better than trying to recreate it. All right. Once I've got that together, all right, I've got my four pieces. I've got my original. All right. One thing I noticed from a lot of you in the Invisible World piece is many of you didn't use the layers that I suggested. All right. And it's okay, but I think it would have helped. All right. So right now I've got my original photograph. And I've got my four layers that I've scanned in. Follow so far? All right. I'm going to take these, and I'm going to shift-click them, all right? And I'm simply going to duplicate them, all right? And then all I'm going to do is put them in a folder, and I'm going to drag it down here. And here's why I'm going to do that. I now have my four pieces. I now have my original. I'm then going to take these pieces... Okay, and I'm going to merge them. 
Once I merge them, they are one layer, and I am done, which is why you want to keep your four separate pieces just in case. Okay? Because if I'm repairing this and I screw up, I can go back to the original, copy a piece, and bring it back, as opposed to start the whole thing over again. So that's the first part is the puzzle. Any questions on that? Okay? Pretty crucial part, because if one's way off, the whole thing's going to start to get way off. All right? So now I begin the process of repairing. I would suggest start broad. Okay? Like I talked about with the, with the other stuff. Get the big, simple pieces out of the way so that you feel that you're accomplishing something. There is nothing worse than spending two hours on something and feeling like you didn't get anything done. So if you get all the big stuff done, you're like, all right, good. I'm really getting them. I'm moving along here. I've got it saved. Oh, before I forget, because I haven't done it yet. Save. Okay, some of you did this. Some of you did not. Your name, the project, as a Photoshop file. I need to see these layers. Okay? So from here... All right, I am going to begin to clone. Again, if you want, okay, you can use the layer technique. All right? But for the start, I'm not going to. So I'm going to use the clone stamp. I'm going to make it bigger. Okay? You can also try the healing brush, as sometimes that works with this. All right? So if I grab the healing brush, I option click, and I come down here, and you're going to want to follow again, okay, exactly where you are. So if I start here, I want to go right down here, and I want to go. All right, option click. All right, I'm going to option click right here. All right, and the healing brush is going to work a lot better than the clone stamp is to start. We talked about why, okay, especially with subtleties of skin. All right, now getting in here, all right, I'm not even going to get on the face yet. As I said, I'm going to start to make myself feel good. I'm going to start getting some stuff copied and some stuff cleaned up. All right. I'm just going across, all right, and I'm repairing the larger cracks that I need to go across. Now, I might have to come back if I pull out, and I'm like, oh, I see smudging. If you zoom out and see smudging, go back in. All right, so let's say I've got this piece now here. I could also, let me find a big crack in the paper. I can grab this, okay? And I can either go edit, fill with content aware, okay? It did an okay job. Or I can also do the patch tool. The patch tool takes the piece that I'm, that I'm selecting, fills it, and changes the light. See, a lot of you falling asleep. Yes, look, stay awake. Same thing here. I can grab the patch tool. It works in smaller pieces. Okay? If I go back to the thing I did with the clone, I can see a light and dark issue here. So I could grab this piece, pull this up here, and start to blend it in a little bit better. Generally speaking, it's never going to be one tool, and I mean that. Little zit, little thing, little this, click, healing brush, it's fine. Okay? Big pieces, you're usually going to have to go back. All right? So you go around, you fix all the big pieces. You can decide before you start, before you start, you can either leave it like this or you can go to grayscale, okay? So I've got this, and I can say image, mode, grayscale, all right? And I'm going to hit don't flatten, okay? Discard. So now it's black and white. Doesn't matter to me if you want it in black and white or sepia, but it will make a difference when you edit. As you're editing in sepia, at the end, if you go to black and white, all of a sudden things pop up that you didn't see before. So just pick one or the other. If it is black and white, I would go to your image. I'd go to our adjustments. I'd go to brightness and contrast. I'd probably brighten it up a little bit. I'd probably adjust the contrast a little bit. When you do that, again, some corrections you make, well, all of a sudden you'll go, whoa, 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 what happened? So just pick which one you want. You want to stay with sepia? Stick with sepia. Okay, some people ask me about black and white. Your call. All right? You'll notice how nice this is already starting to look. Yes? And it's not taking a long time. All right? So go around and take care of the bigger stuff. All right? This piece over here where it looks like somebody smudged a fingerprint, this is easy. Same thing. I'm going to grab the patch tool, zoom, grab it, pull up over here, done. Done. Two seconds. Okay? 
Get all the little pieces. Don't get caught. I want to start with the face. No. Get the big stuff done first. Then go into the detail work. Okay. As you start getting into the faces, okay, we get into here. Now we've got to get into detail. So again, healing brush is going to work way better than the clone stamp here. All right. Going to zoom in a little bit. Going to make my brush small. And I'm going to begin somewhere where I can get to it. And I'm just going to do not click and paint. Click. Okay, that way you can always go back. So I can just go down, right down the line here, and I'm just going to click. Now I got her mouth, so I'm going to click on the mouth and kind of put a piece here. Click here. Right down the line, okay? And again, you're going to pull out afterwards and check it out and see what's going on. Now, you'll notice, okay, that with the healing brush, sometimes it doesn't follow. So if I click here, it stays up there. You just want to watch where your, where your follow brush, where your pointer is, okay? So I go right in, all right? And I'm also noticing, see this line that's going across here? I'm going to quickly, this one I can drag out. I'm going to quickly drag this line out here, all right? And it's kind of up here too, all right? Then you zoom out and you see what it looks like. Looks pretty good to me. Yes? The names have to get removed as well. Yep. Okay. So you can, all right, this one's not as difficult because of what we're doing. You could, if you wanted to, create a new layer, all right, and just call it whatever you want to call it. I'll just call it repair, all right. And I could clone stamp from this one, all right, or healing brush, if you will, all right, from here, and I could move to here and do the same thing. Okay? And that way, if you had to really, if it really got messed up, you could delete your layer. I generally find with photo repair, you don't need the layers. All right? But sometimes it takes the anxiety out because you're like, ah, if I screw it up, I just undo it. If I do anything on the, my original layer, I'm either going to have to go back and copy something or I'm going to have to start over. But I think with this, you won't necessarily need the layers. But just know that you can do that. Okay? And then if you were done with it, if you're like, all right, this is fine. You could take this and you could actually just merge these together, okay? Um, and that's about it. So I have my original and I have my other group. So if I was done, if something happened, I have my four here, I have the original piece, I have the four that I scanned in, and then I have the one I'm working on. That's definitely what I want to see. I want to see the repair layer, the original layer, and the group copies just in case. Any questions on that? Pretty straightforward. Jordan. That's up to you. The AT AT thing's already been handed in, so I would start this first. Okay? Because if, if it risks you not handing this in, then that could be a problem. All right, get to it.